How's it going? I'm back here in the funk zone again. This time we're at Cunin Wines with Megan Cunin. How are you? Hi, welcome to the funk zone. Thank you, thank you. And welcome to Cunin Wines. Awesome. So, what do we got here? Well, today I thought that we I would take you through five of, of my favorite wines for summer. Some of our most popular wines year round, but some things that are really beautiful for people to drink in the summer. Okay, sounds good to me. Let me ask you a quick question though. Sure. Talk to me a little bit about Cunin Wines and the Funk Stone. Well, Cunin Wines was founded by my husband in 1998, so we've been making wine for about 20 years. And we opened our tasting room, this tasting room in the Funk Stone, 10 years ago in 2009. We were one of the, the first um, wineries here after Santa Barbara Winery and Oriana. I think there were about five in this area then, and now they're 23. So it's a lot has really changed in, in 10 years, but. So you're one of the originals? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so it's, it's great. It's really kind of um, a homey place. I think people feel it home here because we've been here for such a long time. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. I really do like it here. And you got a beautiful tasting room too. Thank you, thank you. Um, I want to start today with something that um, I would say is a summer wine, but really people drink rosé year-round now, don't you find that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's always so hot. Well, it's usually warm. It's usually it's always like a spring or a summer day in Santa Barbara. But I think even around the country, people are just drinking more and more rosé. This is a press direct Grenache rosé that we made called Phoebe 2.0. It's named after my daughter, whose great-grandmother was also named Phoebe. And you know, we make a lot of different rosé. Some of it's intensely colored, um, but this is always light. In this vintage, especially in 2017, it's, it's so pale, it almost looks like a white wine. But when you taste it, I think uh, you'll know immediately you're tasting Grenache. Oh, and, yeah. And rosé, if you close your eyes. If you close your eyes. <laughs> and also just on the palate. Well, wait a minute. Now, the color just comes from the skins, correct? From a brief contact with the skins. Right. Um, it's red Grenache that we make this one. Well, some are lighter than others. No big deal. Well, some can have more skin contact than others. Oh, that's really good. Isn't it refreshing? Yeah, it is. It tastes like a summer day. Sure does. Nice and crisp. So this is it's pure Grenache? It's pure Grenache. The second wine that I wanted to show you is the wine that we make. It's called Popstar Blonde. And the name Popstar is a reference. It's kind of an inside joke, a reference to the wines of Chateau Neuf de Pop. A Cunin wines we, we really love our Rhone wines, our Rhone varieties. Our kind of winery is a kind of a love letter to the Rhone. And this is Grenache Blanc and Roussin. Ooh. There's no new oak on the wine, and I think you'll find it has kind of the weight of a Chardonnay. Mmm, smells but all this great. kind of freshness, like a, yeah. almost like a Riesling. It's a beautiful food wine. Yeah, the Roussin in there, you can really taste that that blend there that yeah. it goes it goes perfectly with this wine. Okay. Good. Wait, I'm gonna just just don't push me. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So, um, I suppose this is the sister to this wine, which is our, the original wine that we started making in the from the 2003 vintage. Um, this is our 2016 Popstar Red Wine. It's also kind of based on the recipe for Chateau Neuf de Pop. It's Grenache, Syrah, Morbedro, and it's some vintages, a little bit of Cinso, and we add a little Cinso and Cunois to kind of um, use as a spice box. So it's Actually. like GSM with a like little a extra kick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mmm. I love GSMs. Yeah. It's something you could definitely drink a glass of and then drink another glass of. So are we using old barrels? Or are we using neutral barrels? Oh, uh, neutral barrels. Neutral barrels, yeah. okay. And what exactly does that mean, neutral barrels? Um, think of a barrel like a tea bag. Maybe the first time you use it, you get all those tannins, you get like that tea influence. And by the fourth or fifth time that you use that tea bag, it's really not doing anything. Except for that in the case of a barrel, uh, I think you get texture. 
uh, there's a specific <clears throat> way that you get micro aeration to, to your wines that gives the wine a nice texture. That you so it, it gives it a, just it's got its own character to it. Right. Mm. Yeah, I do notice though it, um, it's like like a Pinot, that softness of a Pinot, yeah, but yeah. it's not a Pinot. There's no right. Pinot grape in it, correct? Right. Yeah, what I like about it is it has kind of a, the weight and the texture of a Pinot, but also like the, the real super earthiness of more Vedra and um, a little bit of structure from the Syrah. It'd be good with some tri -tip. It would be great with some tri -tip. Mm -hmm. It'd be great with tri -tip or So we're going to... Uh, Barbecue afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Yeah. Head over to Cold Springs Tavern. There you go. <sighs> yeah, that's good. I like it. Now soft wine. Right. Now, um I think to the Zinfandel before we do our single vineyard Syrah. I know that sounds a little crazy. So Zinfandel might sound odd in a lineup that's you know based on Rome varieties. But the fact is that Zinfandel was the, one of the first ones that we started making. Because um, it's so great here and it's so exciting to make. So tell me why is it different? Why is it different to get out of the Rhone and into the stock? Because this is, there couldn't be a more American grape than Zinfandel. And Rhone grapes aren't really native here. Right. Um, you know, uh, Zinfandel can be very elegant. We make a very elegant style of uh, of Zinfandel, but it's like um, not earthy, not generally earthy at all. It's usually about fruit and spice, so it's different. Plus, uh, we grow and make 95% uh, of our wines from Santa Barbara County, and Zinfandel will always be either in Paso or somewhere else. This vintage is actually from Amador. Uh, during the drought years that we've had over the last decade, it just became more and more difficult to make kind of the elegant style of Zinfandel that we want to out of Paso, and so we started going to Amador for our fruit. We're back in Paso now, but um, what is the smell? I mean, this mm. is just, you know, we make a lot of different red wines, and I have to say, like, in a, there's nobody, I don't think, in a blind tasting who wouldn't smell this. I know what it is. It's a jammy, it is. A jammy it's like smell. like raspberry jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put a made in USA stamp on it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. You know, when we go to France, it's it's always so funny because the French winemakers will will say, God, I "Really admire your wine. I'd love to have a bottle of that." Dot dot dot, and and it ends with Zinfandel because it's so exotic to them. Right, and right. It's something that they can't make. Right. Really. Gotta love that though, huh? Yeah. Let's hear it to American winemaking. <laughs> Mm. <clears throat> so that no French winemakers have brought Zinfandel cuttings over to right, right. try to make them there. Um, we we'll go to uh, the last one we're going to do here. You know, I do have to say though that um, the great thing about the Zinfandels is that um, it's bold, you know, and what you were saying about, you know, all the French type of, uh, of varietals and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I always tell people to uh, trust your own palate. You know, yeah. Drink what you like, like yeah. what you drink. Absolutely, there's no point. Life is too short. Yeah. You really have to drink the things that you respond to. But there's a reason why there's so many wines. And that and that's what I love about the whole industry, is that people can choose what they want. And I try to get people to come to places like Cunin Wines to check out all the different uh, types of variety of wines that you create. And sure, sure, sure. You know what I mean? Are you ready for a treat? Yeah, I'm always ready for a treat. So, so the last one I'm going to pour for you is our Elisa's Vineyard Syrah. I want to show you, we have a little map here. Um, the Elisa's Vineyard is a tiny property here in the middle of Los Alamos, which I think should have its own ABA or its own designation in the next couple of years. It's a really special place to grow grapes. Um, this particular vineyard is all biodynamically farmed, and um, I think it's, you just get an intensity here that. What do you mean by biodynamic? Um, I think of it as like beyond organic. It's not only um, farmed without the use of commercial pesticides, 
and so on, but uh, it's actually formed by the phases of the moon. Ooh. Um, for, to my mind, I, I think that anything that causes uh, a farmer or a winemaker to pay more attention to their grapes and to really have an intimate relationship with those grapes is better for their wife. Nice. Mmm. Oh, I like Syrah. Yeah. <clears throat> just, that is really good. I love smelling this wine. There's such a nice intensity to it. It's got a little smokiness to it. Nice smokiness and really kind of, I think of it as like layered fruit. Mm-hmm. I see what you mean. There you go. Another one for mm. your barbecue. Um, you know, I was, uh, I had heard on the grapevine <laughs> um, that you have a <laughs> that you have a sister winery called the Valley Project. We do, we do, and I just shown you a map of um, of the county to show you our vineyards, and we the the Valley Project is down the street. I'd like to show you. Absolutely. So it's here in the Funk Zone. It is. Right oh, well, oh, let's go. All right, let's go. Wine Beauty here at Cunin Wines. Now we're going to the Valley Project. Still in the funk zone. This time we're at the Valley Project, Megan Cunin's other winery, or should I say sister winery, correct? Our sister tasting room, yeah. And, and its own separate winery. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This is cool. So explain. It's a map. It's a map of our county. It was hand drawn in chalk from actually the Champagne region in France by our friend, an artist in LA called Christian Kaskovic. She goes by the name all the time. And the star is where we are here uh, in the folk zone of Santa Barbara. And this kind of maps the, the journey that you would take through the valley to hit all the AVAs or the American viticultural areas that we have. Santa Barbara County is incredibly diverse, uh, climatically and geographically. And that's one of the reasons you can grow so many different grapes here so well. Um, if you want to think about it, like the, the mountain ranges along the coastline are mirrored by uh, mountain ranges just above them. So there's this transverse valley, it moves um, west to east, and it's, it's open to the ocean there by Santa Rita Hills. And so all the cool damp air comes off the ocean and sweeps into the valley uh, every day. Um, and the dynamic is such that you have cool damp air there. It could be about 64 degrees, and at the very same moment in a morning or a day, it can be 95 degrees at Happy Canyon. Which is why Pinot and Chardonnay love it there, besides the fact that it's like got sandy soils, sandy well draining soils, and Bordeaux varieties really, really love it there. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, but again, you know, sometimes people are in the mood for less think and more drink. Um, I want to show you, for example, we have two Sauvignon Blancs from 2016 here that we made. One from Ballard Canyon, which is in the, the center of our valley, and one from Happy Canyon, which comes from the, the hottest or more, most extreme part. Um, but I just wanted to show you how, how different they can taste just based on their location because we, we made them the same way. Do you want to start with like the, the zippy Saltman Sauvignon Blanc? Sure, sure. So this is the cooler climate or the warmer climate? Cooler, cooler, cooler climate. climate. Okay. Oh, Sauvignon Blanc yep. from Ballard Canyon, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get that really almost... Um, like New Zealandish nose, like really bright, a lot of grapefruit. Yeah, I was gonna say very citrusy. Very citrusy. Mm hmm. Very good though. Yeah, yeah. Nice and crisp. Mmm. Just bright. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now let's move on to, oh my goodness. 
You're going to have to drink it, sorry. <laughs> we went to um, the McGinley Vineyard in Happy Canyon. This one is just pound for pound, a lot more rich. And I think for some of you blog lovers, you get an idea of how mm. it just smells deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the different areas that your, your grapes are being grown in can and have an effect on the, the a wine. A more meat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I definitely see the difference. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah, so this is the, the warmer climate. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's start with the Sangiovese. Sangiovese, this is from the Chenton Ani Vineyard in Los Olivos. And this is, um, again, when you think of the varieties that grow well in Santa Barbara County, you, think, you think a lot about French grapes. Um, but this is, of course, an Italian grape, and I think Italian varieties do very well in Santa Barbara County. So, Los Olivos, show me on the map where that is. Los Olivos is in the uh, center of the map. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure that you've filmed in Los Olivos before. I have, I have, many times. Lots of wine tasting rooms there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Los Olivos became an AVA a couple of years ago. Um, in terms of the different um, ABA is known for having the most uh, uniform soil profile in the valley, and they, they're, they're really kind of defining what they think it's good for. There's a lot of things that grow well here, including San Jose. Mm hmm San Jose. That rich Italian smell. <laughs> Spiciness to it. Very spicy. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you throw away the wine, it's just alcohol abuse. There I mean, you go. That's kind of how I look. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great. Ready for some petit verdot? I uh, I love petit verdot. <clears throat> so petit verdot. This is from the McKinley Vineyard in Happy Canyon. It's kind of cool. You can spend a lot of time looking at our wall. There's, there's details. There are no buildings except for the Cold Spring Tavern right there, but there's lots of little historical facts. This Petit Verdot is grown in Happy Canyon, and um, it's, there are other Happy Canyon uh, wine regions in the United States. So you actually have to call this one Happy Canyon of Santa Barbara. And the way it got its name is that apparently during Prohibition, um, a lot of the moonshine and like uh, bootlegging was done here, so it says happy since Prohibition, 1920. People used to go up there, take so a trip to Happy Canyon to get their happy. Does that have anything to do with your wine? Uh, yeah. A little bit of moonshine? No, yeah. no, no. Okay, okay. Of course not. Of course yeah. not. Of course not. Right. <laughs> mm. Deeper dough. It's like my newest thing. It's kind of neat because you go into these different wineries now and, and a lot of them have now Petit Verdot. Yeah, I mean it's nice when you can go and taste different varieties and you kind of have a, a little journey in a glass, you know, someplace you've never been. Yeah, and, and the great thing is, is like we went to your other winery, which is Cunin Wines. We tried Syrah, Zinfandel, uh, Grenache. Natural Shannon. Natural Shannon and and the uh, the pop wines, the pop star yeah, wines, pop star ones, yeah. right? And now here we are, a Valley Project in the Funk Zone, right down the street. What are we talking? Two blocks maybe Two away. Two blocks away. And we're trying Sangiovese. We're trying Petit Verdot and Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, we we make a lot of different varieties for the Valley Project. You can find everything here from Gruner Veltliner and Riesling. Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir. We really want to um, explore the valley by making wine from significant places all over the valley. That's we pretty cool. want to share that with people. Um, I really love your wines. Really love the idea that you're one of the original uh, wine tasting rooms and wineries here in the Funk Zone. Um, trying to show everybody what the Funk Zone is because a lot of people don't know what the Funk Zone is. And I just, I'm very impressed with what you do. 
There's one other thing that I want to show you here before we both have to go. Okay. And that is the soil wall. So let me get this straight. All of these different soils come from the different areas mm -hmm. throughout the valley. Yeah. Right? And each one of them has its own specialty for a different type of grape. Yeah, grapes tend to like one environment or another. We actually have something in our winery called the dirt bag. It's a giant bag. Wait, wait, is that like my cameraman bird? Oh no, we're not talking about that? No. Oh, okay, okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. It's uh, when we go into a vineyard and we really see that there's like a pure uh, expression of soil, we'll, we'll take soil from our different vineyards. Okay, so I've got your petite Verdot here. Which type of soil would it like the most? Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far. But, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> that's, that's from Happy Canyon. There's a lot of serpentine and, and shaley loam there. So a lot of a lot of the different ABAs have a, a blend of different um, soils, but we really wanted people to be able to see, smell, and they touch the soils. Right. Cool. Part of the Valley Project. There you go. Gotcha. There you go. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, and this is The Wine Dude signing off here at The Valley Project. <laughs>